a large army of horse riders starts gathering at the horizon. The sergeant at the post notices this. It's morning. The sun has risen up, and so has the enemy. 14,000 soldiers flooded the streets of Sargari in Afghanistan. Nobody had expected that a small post of only 21 soldiers would find themselves surrounded by such a large army with guns and rifles. A huge army, insurmountable odds, and a certain death. This is the fate that was waiting for those 21 soldiers defending the post. Fleeing or surrender was never an option. The Battle of Saragari is the modern simile to the last stand of 300 Spartans at Thermopylae, but with even crazier odds. Today, we're talking about the most gallant and nutty last stand of the modern world. This is the Battle of Saragari. But before we get started, be sure that you subscribe to the Nutty History channel and click the bell to stay updated with our upcoming content. Now let's get into it. Afghans were clearly planning this coup for a long time. Ishar Singh and his men were on a high alert, as Afghans had tried to attack the nearby forts multiple times recently. This is also why British garrison was spread too thin to provide any more men at the small post. However, if this post fell, the two forts, Gulistan and Lockhart, would not be able to communicate any further and Afghans would succeed in picking off both forts one by one, for the lack of assistance and reinforcements. When Ishar Singh spotted the hordes of enemy troops approaching, he directed Sepoy Gurumukh Singh to contact Fort Lockhart immediately. Enemy approaching the man gate, need reinforcement. The commanding officer at Fort Lockhart was Lieutenant Colonel Houghton. He immediately responded to the message with orders for troops to march down to Saragari, but when he looked down from the signaling tower, he was astounded. Afghans had surrounded the whole village. There was no way to break through for the reinforcements. It was too late. The Afghans already had their plans in position. Realizing the grave situation, Houghton sends a reply immediately. Unable to break through, hold position. Lieutenant Colonel Houghton also counted about 14 companies of enemy troops, consisting of about a thousand men each. This information was also relayed to Saragari. Hold position! That was the message from the fort. There will be no reinforcement, there will be no support, there will be no more ammunition. Anybody else would have either surrendered or abandoned the post. But when Sergeant Ishar Singh gathered his men to consult, they all echoed his own opinion – to take a stand and defend the post till death. You might be wondering, well, what is this? Madness? No. This is Kulso! I bet you were expecting me to say Sparta instead of Kulso, weren't you? Frankly, what followed at Saragari was no less legendary than what transpired at the Great Battle of Thermopylae 2,500 years ago under the Spartan King Leonidas and his 300 men. There is not much difference between the culture of a Spartan and a Khalsa when it comes to the life of a soldier. Their obligation to their duty and the honor of their army was far greater for them than their own lives. Ishar Singh may have been only a sergeant, but his leadership skills were far beyond his designated rank. And on the 12th of September in 1897, the man proved his mettle by instilling fear and agony among the hearts of Afghans, for the likes of which they had never, ever witnessed before. Sergeant Ishar Singh lined his men in two rows, the front row squatting down and the back row standing up. They were armed with 303 caliber guns, so Ishar made them wait until the enemy approached as close as 250 meters from the post. At this range, these guns were deadly accurate. As soon as Ishar Singh commanded to fire, the whole vanguard of the Bataan alliance was decimated. This was nowhere close to a victory, but it did catch the enemy off guard. This was the moment Afghans realized. 
taking over the post would not be a walk in the park, like they were assuming until now. A battle cry from the post roared the sky. Jobole Sonihal Sat Sriakal! Lieutenant Colonel Houghton, on the other side, was anxious too. All his attempts to supply ammunition to these brave and stubborn men at Saragari had been futile. Meanwhile, by 1400 hours, Ishar Singh's regiment blew off another wave of attack to the dismay of the Afghans. After another failure, Afghans had reached the limit of their patience. This caused them to resort to a more tactical approach. They set fire to every nearby bush and tree to create a smokescreen. The motive behind this move was to take advantage of a small bridge that they have managed to create in the post. Houghton, who was keeping a sharp eye on the turn of the events, immediately asked his heliograph operator to send another message to Sargari. Enemy approaching! The breach! Sargari was down to their last six men, and Sergeant Ishar Singh himself was severely injured, with bullet wounds and bayonet stabs. Reading the room, Ishar once again showed his exemplary skills as a leader. He knew that if Afghans made it through the breach, it would be all over, and thus a sacrifice was required. He commanded the youngest soldier, Sepoy Gurmukh Singh, to stay on the heliograph tower while he ordered the other four to retreat to the inner walls. But before that, he asked two of them to carry himself to the breach, where Ishar Singh will take his… well, you know, last stand. Ishar was all out of ammunition and thus fixed his bayonet to his rifle to buy as much time as possible for his colleagues. In his last moments, Ishar Singh went all in to perform an extraordinary feat of courage and valor and fought the enemy till his last breath. While Sepoy Gurumukh Singh reported these events to Fort Lockhart, the four men inside inner walls formed an all-round formation with their backs against each other to fight a fierce battle to delay the inevitable. As the Afghans started pouring in, every single one of these sepoys fought till the last breath to either kill or kick the Afghans back. Gurumukh Singh, who was still executing his communication duties to Fort Lockhart, asked permission from Lieutenant Colonel Houghton to join the battle. It would be a tough decision for any commander to send a mere kid in action where death is the only certain outcome for him. This must have been a gut-wrenching moment for Lieutenant Colonel Houghton. The young man, without fearing for his life, jumped down from the tower with his bayonet and, to the shock of Afghans, started cutting them down one after the other. Within an hour, he had killed about 40 of the enemy soldiers forcing them to retreat out of the post. Embarrassed by the ruthlessness of a 19-year-old against his army, Afghani leader Ghul Bad Shah ordered his soldiers to burn down the post. Gurumukh Singh died holding the defense till his last breath. The fierce battle on a hot sunny day had left Afghans exhausted by 1600 hours. After a short rest, they turned their attention towards Fort Gulistan, but the reinforcements from Fort Lockhart arrived with heavy artillery, and the Afghans were forced to surrender. The Afghan alliance admitted a loss of 600 soldiers that day. However, the reinforcement reported witnessing a total of 1,400 bodies at Saragari. The total loss to Afghans was nearly 5,000 before they surrendered to the heavy artillery. The impact of their feat was so huge that all 21 non-commissioned officers and soldiers who martyred in the Sargari battle were posthumously awarded Victoria Cross and Queen Victoria, Empress of Commonwealth herself, praised the valor of these brave men in the British Parliament. What Ishar Singh and his men achieved may not be as mythical as King Leonidas's 300 Spartans, but it is definitely nothing less of legendary. So, what do you think? Was there any other last stand from the modern history of the world that matches the gallantry of these six in Sargari? Let us know in the comments below, and when you're done, check out some of these other videos from Nutty History.